Alright guys, so welcome back to our episode 2. So in the last video, it was a about a 30 minute to 40 minute video. Just really going over the, you know, the f just like the basics, uh, you know, why program, what is programming. And we, you know, did, I did show you guys a little bit on how to write a simple Hello World program. But we didn't really do much programming. Okay, so in this episode, what we're going to be doing is we're going to actually... I'm going to actually introduce you guys, like what, what programming is, and we're going to be writing some code. We're going to be explaining all the fundamentals. Okay, so we've already created our first JavaScript file, as you can see. Let me zoom in a little bit more. You can see we have program1.js, and I covered that if we want to display messages to the console, we can just say console.log hello world. Now, I know this stuff might be a little bit confusing, but typically, you know, when it comes to learning programming, the first thing that you learn to do is just outputting stuff to the console or outputting stuff to the, you know, yeah, the console. That's what it's called. But don't worry so much about it. if you don't know what, you know, log means. All just know that all this does right now is it just displays messages or, you know, it displays, you know, uh, output to the console. OK, uh, when we get more deeper into, you know, functions, objects, things like that, all this will start to come back. I promise you guys. But don't worry so much about it for now. OK, so let's go ahead and just get started with a couple other things that I want to talk about. So I'm going to move my notes over here. And let me just, you know, uh, open this up. Okay, so programming statements, okay? So what are programming statements? Now, the code that we just have, right? This source code over here, this is called source code. Okay, source code is all of the programming statements that are written inside that .js file or whatever uh, code file that you're working with, whatever language is. So for example, in this case, we have JavaScript source code. If we were writing a .java file, it would be considered Java source code and etc. OK, in this case, we have JavaScript source code. OK, now source code is usually made up of either zero or thousands of lines of, you know, what are called programming statements. OK, just like in the English language, paragraphs are made up of grammatical statements or sentences. A program, likewise, is constructed of a bunch of programming statements. And with that being said, programming statements must follow their language's syntax. See, different languages have different syntax. Uh, but again, don't worry so much about that because learning the syntax of one language will enable you to learn the syntax of another language. And that's why I want you guys to focus more on understanding the core fundamentals instead of just the language itself. Because the language, you can easily learn a different language at any point. But understanding the basics, the very, very core basics, like, you know, for loops, decision structures, Variables, all that kind of stuff. Those are the most important things. And you can later on translate that to whatever language you want. Okay, so let's move on. Okay, so just some examples of programming statements. We have var a equals 2, var b equals 3. This is this would just be a simple program that declares two variables, a and b, and then assigns the value 2 to a, and then value 3 to b. Each line consists of statements. They must follow their proper syntax in order for the interpreter to understand. Um, and one thing that I will mention is that in many languages, in many statically typed languages or any other kind of language itself, a lot of times the language requires every statement, every programming statement to end with a semicolon, kind of like in an English sentence or in any kind of a sentence, we have what's called punctuation, right? Every single um, sentence must end with a period. Likewise, in programming statements, we end the statement with a semicolon. However, JavaScript does not require semicolons to terminate the this end of a uh, programming statement. Now, I do you can do it. I do it personally because I come from a Java background, and I just personally enjoy using semicolons. But you don't have to, okay? But that's just one thing that I want to mention. Okay, so the first thing that I want to talk about, and this is the most important thing to ever mention, are variables okay what are variables you've probably heard about variables when you've taken algebra when you've you know, taken some kind of science class back in high school or college whatever right variables are just containers that store a single piece of information for us and we can use that later on kind of like in math when we say x equals five okay the value of x is five in this in other words another name for five is x because we're basically giving x the value five Okay, don't worry, I'm just, you know, mentioning that off the top of my head. We're going to see that in, in code later on. 
Okay, but pretty much variables, they can contain all sorts of information. They're very useful for keeping track of the state of a program. Okay, let's say if you were filling out some form online, right? Um, usually you'd enter your name, your age, etc. right? Now, over time, you might want to change your name later on. So what, what happens is you're going back to that form, you're going back to the original state, and you're changing your name to something else. Okay, so your name was originally saved in some variable in memory. Okay, and then you're changing that for, for later on. So you can do that. That's why variables are good because they can store information and we can reuse them later on in the application. Okay, variables can contain information about, you know, for example, a user's name, their age, the date of birth, address, and more. Okay, now with that being said, there are uh, a couple of rules that we need to go about. Now, in order to use variables, uh, we first must declare them. Okay, so declaring a variable is very easy. In JavaScript, there are several ways to declare a variable, which we're going to go over. Uh, we're going to go over the first way, the primary way to do it, and then we're going to talk about the other two ways later on. Okay, so there are three keywords. These are reserved keywords that is interpreted by the JavaScript uh, interpreter. Okay, so we can use the var keyword the let keyword or the const keyword to declare our variables. Again, don't worry so much about it. For now, we're going to be using var just for simplicity. Okay, so let's go into Visual Studio Code. I'm going to create a new file. We're going to call this uh, program, uh, we'll call it variables.js. Okay, so what I want to do, let me clear this. So what I want to do is I want to declare a couple variables. So we use the var keyword declare variables. So we're going to say var. And if you're using Visual Studio Code, you can see that if you have some syntax highlighting, you're going to see that this keyword var is actually highlighted differently. And you're going to see, I'm going to name my variable something else. Let me actually move my notes to the other side because I actually need to keep this for reference because I can't remember every single thing off the top of my head. But it is going to be important that I mention these things. Okay, so we have var. That is the keyword. That basically means we're going to declare a variable. And now what we need to do is we need to come up with a name for our variable. Okay, so we can name our variable whatever we want. So for example, I can name my variable my name. Okay, and I'm going to end this declaration with a semicolon. Cool. So all I've done so far was I've just declared a variable. I didn't do anything else. Okay, now what I can do next is I can assign this variable a value. So I can say my name equals Anson. Okay, so what I've just done so far was I assigned the value Anson, which is a string, which I'll explain later on, to the variable my name. Okay, it's kind of like in algebra when you say let x equal 5, right? x has the value 5. In this case, my name has the value Anson. Okay, it has the literal value Anson. Okay, I can also declare a variable like this, my age, and I can assign it a value on the same line. So it can save up lines of code. So for example, var my age equals 20, an example like that. In this case, my age has the literal value or rather variable value 20. Okay, we assign the literal 20, which is a numeric value to my age. Okay, now that's pretty cool. And there are a couple of rules when it comes to declaring variables. Okay, and let's go over those rules. So although you can name your variables whatever you want, there are some things, there are some symbols that you cannot use, and there are some declaration rules. Okay, so variable names cannot contain spaces. For example, if I did my space name, you're going to see that this would be a syntax error, and it's going to say, it's going to, on Visual Studio Code, it's going to highlight this. Okay, you're going to see that this is an error over here. Okay, you cannot have spaces in your variable names. Uh, variable names, uh, they must begin with either a letter, so A to Z, or, you know, capital A, whatever. Uh, it can either begin with a dollar sign or an underscore like this. So, for example, my name or my underscore name, I can do that as well. That would be a valid variable declaration, or I can do dollar sign underscore my underscore name but i can't do something like at that would be invalid i can't do percentage okay i can't do ampersand i can't do asterisk i can't do those things okay and also uh variable names can only consist of alphanumeric characters so um numbers or letters 
I think I've mentioned also that it needs, to, it cannot, so it cannot also begin with a number, but I think I covered that in the previous statement where I said it must either begin with a letter, underscore, or dollar sign. So that means you can't start a variable with a number like this. So five name, for example, I can't do that. Okay, I can do name five, right? So yeah, so variable names can only consist of alphanumeric characters. So that's letters or numbers. Um, just can't start with number. They can have underscores, they can have dollar signs, but they can't have the symbols that I covered. So you can have, you know, a pound symbol, you can have, an or can have a percentage sign, carrot sign, you can have these kind of signs, okay? And yeah, that shouldn't be um, too easy to, that shouldn't be too, that shouldn't be too hard to, uh, to forget. And you also cannot have a variable name that matches a reserved keyword. Now we will go over reserved keywords later on in this whole tutorial series. But pretty much reserved keywords are things like var. Var is a reserved keyword. It basically has significance, has some kind of significant meaning that is to be used for something else. So for example, var is a reserved keyword that's used to declare variables. Same thing with let. Same thing with const, right? So I can't declare a variable called const because const is a reserved keyword. Okay, likewise, if is also a reserved keyword um, for uh, conditional statements. Same thing with switch. Again, I'll list these out later on. But don't worry about that for now. Okay, cool. All right, so um, other things to mention about variable names. Variable names are case sensitive. So for example, if I declare var my name equals Anson, this is different than var my name Anson. They're case sensitive. They have two different things. Actually, let me change this to something else. Let me change this to John. So if I want to log these variables to the console, I can just pass in that variable value into the parentheses, right, like this. Likewise, from my name, like this. And if I save it, and let's run our program, let's run variables.js, and you're gonna see Anson John. Okay, it logged the value of the variable rather than the actual variable, my name itself. Like, the, you know what I mean? Okay, so again, they're case sensitive. Okay, um, another thing that I want to mention is typically when we name variables, we follow uh, certain casing conventions. So for example, the most popular one used in a lot of different languages is camel case. And what that means is basically the first letter of the first word of the variable name is lowercase, and then every first letter for each word after is capitalized. So obviously you probably forgot what I, you probably don't understand what I mean. Let me show you. So let's say for example, if I wanted a variable to keep track of the total amount of miles driven for a car so we can say var we can we can declare we can declare like this we can say var total miles driven like that right now that kind of looks a little bit ugly because you have three different words and you know it just looks kind of ugly let's change that up a little bit so following camel case the first word the letter the first letter of the first word is lowercase so in this case t is lowercase and everything else is also lowercase too okay and every other word's first letter is capitalized. So in this case, mile is the next word. So we're going to capitalize M. Same thing with driven. We're going to capitalize D. And you're going to see that it actually looks much more better, in my opinion. I mean, you might not see it, but I figured, you know, showing this to you very early on would definitely catch your eye. And you're going to get used to it. It's a very common practice that a lot of people do. And in the real world, it's always about writing readable code that other people can understand as well. You might understand it, but if you're working in a team-based environment, other people are going to need to be able to interpret your code. And if you write really bad code, you're going to get criticized for it. So it's important that you learn these very, very, very important practices right now. Okay. And we can assign this the value of fifth, uh, 520. Okay. And we can log it to the console and we can just go ahead and say node variables.js 520. There you go. Very, very straightforward camel case. This is called camel case, by the way. Okay. And likewise, a couple more examples. Let's say we want to store the first name. I can say first, so F is going to be lowercase. And then N for name is going to be capitalized. I can say Anson. I can say uh, var total hours slept equals eight, as usual. Var total distance driven. Let's just say... um. Let's say 20. Well, let's say in miles. So in miles equals 20. I think you guys get the idea. It's very, very straightforward. So definitely when you are practicing writing your code, you definitely want to make sure you are practicing these conventions. Okay, they might seem like very little things, but trust me, these little things make a huge difference. 
Okay, so a couple things that I want to mention. I think I may have mentioned them already, but I'll just go over just in case. So common practices. So name your variable something that will help you recall what it represents. Okay, so let's say, for example, if you need to store a user's favorite color, the best thing to do is name a variable after that, right? So it wouldn't make sense for me to declare a variable called uh, favorite food and only for that variable to represent my favorite color, blue. It wouldn't make sense because later on when you when your application grows, you're going to have probably a bunch of different variables or properties or fields when we get to objects and you're just going to be very confused. Like, why is blue my favorite food? That makes no sense. So let's name it something like favorite color. Something like that. That works perfectly. Okay. And again, use camel casing all the time. For example, I showed this example earlier in the, in the text editor. And also, one thing that I should mention is variable names that are all capitalized typically are used for constants. So let's talk about constants real quick. Okay. So let's say, for example, if you want a variable that you don't want to change over time the program. Because right now, all these variables, we can change the value of it at any point in the program, whenever we want. So right now, if I go ahead and say my name, okay? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to concatenate this string, my name. Uh, and I, I know I haven't explained string yet, but don't worry. I will do that in the in when we get to data types. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to concatenate this string, this string literal, with the variable first name. And you're going to see in the console, it's going to go ahead and say... My name, Anson. I should say my name is Anson. Okay? And this is called string concatenation. What I'm doing here is I'm concatenating the literal value, right? A literal value, I'll, which I'll get to that in the next slide. I'm concatenating a literal value with a variable value. So the output of that is going to be my name, let's run that again, is Anson. Okay, now let's say, for example, if I want to change my name, let's say if we are on a social media application and we wish to change our first name, I can say first name equals Jack. Okay, and I can go ahead and say, now my name is first name. And if I run this program again, it's going to say, now my, my name is Anson. Now my name is Jack. Now, what if we wanted to have some variable that we, that we don't want changing over time? Okay, so what we could do is we can declare that variable as a constant. So let's get rid of all this. Let's just say const my first name equals Anson. Now, if I log this to the console, you're going to see that it's going to log Anson. But if I try to change it, if I try to reassign a value to my first name, reassign this literal value, and you're notice how I'm saying literal over and over again because I'm going to go over in the next slide because it's very important to understand the difference between a literal value and a variable value. But let's assign the value Jack. And let's try to run this program. And you're going to see we're going to get an error. And it's going to say something like assignment to constant variable. You're going to get a compilation or runtime error rather because you can't reassign values for constants. Okay, so if you want to declare constant, do so, but usually you'd want to have it all uppercase like my first name. You don't have to, but it's really all up to you. Typically, some people do do that just for convention. So it's important that I mention that. All right, cool. And just a couple examples and const name, SSN. And if I try, and you can see from the Visual Studio Code when we tried to reassign the value of my first name, it threw an error. Okay. All right. So uh, the next thing that we need to talk about are data types, but I'm going to get to that in the next video. So I want to kind of like, I don't want to like make such long videos, like, you know, 30, 40 minute videos. I want to break this down into step by step videos. So I know we did go over a lot so far when it came to variables. So I want you guys to take this time to go over it, understand a little bit. Um, and if I remember, I probably might put a custom exercise so you guys can, you know, practice yourselves, but you know, if you guys are confused, again, just rewatch the video, uh, try to understand everything. If you are very confused with something in particular, just ask in the comments section below or just join my Discord server. So I think I'll keep it, I think I'll stop it over here. And in the next video, we're going to go over data types. Okay, so um, that's pretty much it. I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace.